Alrighty, let's get started. Here we go with the Wang Poito Show. We're on YouTube and now we're about to go Facebook Live. I'm in Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas, the home of the 2020 New Mexico Bowl. Yes, very confusing. But I always have to emphasize that we are in Texas, not New Mexico. Because if you're making that last minute trip or you got an idea to join us, because fans are going to be in attendance in Frisco, Texas, make sure you're there tomorrow, Toyota Stadium. I'm already in town. You see Dallas behind me. The lights here at the Gaylord Texan, uh, right in Grapevine, Texas. I just had some amazing Tex-Mex food, which was basically my first um, you know, objective when I got to Dallas uh, was to eat Tex-Mex, because I love Tex-Mex. And um, I love food in general, but when, whenever I'm traveling and whenever I take a Hawaii sports fans group out, we always find the best local food. And we've actually been here to uh, Dallas before as well, actually. Uh, we were here um, for the Cowboys and Giants in 2015. That was a part of our UH versus Ohio State tour. We went to Ohio. The very next day we, we flew to Dallas and we saw the Cowboys and we saw Romo. Uh, throw a game-winning touchdown, which is seconds left over Eli Manning uh, in the Cowboys game. And we also did a Niners game. We flew to, to um, San Fran. But while we were here in Dallas, we had some amazing Tex-Mex food. And that's always one of my first objectives whenever I get to Dallas, Texas, is to eat, especially Mexican food. Everybody, you know, you do think it's barbecue. And I'm going to get my barbecue probably tomorrow. But about that Tex-Mex action. So I had a pretty delicious chimichanga tonight and uh, some other things, but mostly the chimichanga. Um, <clears throat> but Hawaii and Houston, obviously now here in, the, in town, we are literally about uh, 19 hours away from kickoff. So um, here in, oh, less than that. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong time zone. So here in Dallas, it's actually nine, past 9 p.m. already, so I believe in Hawaii. I, I did get this on time, right, guys? It's, it's just 5 o'clock now, but uh, Dallas, you see not too many people, I guess, walking around that are college football fans. You, uh, obviously, in a normal year, you'd probably see a lot uh, more people who are here for bowl games or, you know, here to support their team because basketball or something started, uh, but it's been quiet, and it's definitely... Um, a, a, different, a different year for, for Texas football, but apparently they're still uh, having high school football, and there's, there's games tomorrow night, actually. So uh, maybe I'll catch a, another high school football game in Texas. We did do a Texas high school football game in Brenham, Texas, on, that, uh, on a tour that I, I brought, a Hawaii sports fans tour. We also went to Dallas on that tour as well. So this is actually now uh, my third time guess in, in the Hawaii sports fans capacity here in Dallas but Texas obviously one of those uh, states that loves football so um, you know maybe we'll see a bunch of fans there from just people that want to uh, watch football I'm not sure though I, 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 I'm not sure just in my personal circle of people that I know that go to a lot of Hawaii football games I don't think too many people are coming I see uh, Jen Dalton how's it Jen aloha Jen aloha Brad um, as Jen, are you coming to the game? I, um, I thought that she might be on it in tomorrow. Dalton. Um, and uh, I know we have some, some of our usuals, but this year is obviously a hard year. And um, I was, as I was saying yesterday when I went live, <clears throat> it's just difficult if you're traveling and if you are um, needing to get back to Hawaii and needing to take a test. Uh, I'm probably going to go to LA if I'm here to take a test in LA and then go to Hawaii, but um, it's a lot of issues to, to be able to get back uh, in time for Christmas, which I'm not going to be able to do. I know that that's at this point, but a uh, big game for UH nonetheless. I think a lot of people are happy about playing this game. I think a lot of our fans are excited that we have a prospect of another game and that we have a chance to build upon Coach Graham's legacy in his first, or at least his, his um, you know, the foundation for his program in his first year. If he can get out of this year with a five and four, five and four record, it'll be, you know, wonderful. It'll be a great year. Uh, four and four, pretty good year. We, I think a solid year given what was coming back and uh, given all the issues with the um, 
the coronavirus. Uh, but the other team, on the other hand, that Hawaii will be facing New Mexico, the other UH. I love that in their their uh, their logo, there actually is UH. In Hawaii, we say UH all the time too. It's funny because UH people will think Houston, probably before they think Hawaii. It's mainly. But in Hawaii, we always say UH. We've always said it that way. Um, but uh, this UH team had eight games this year, either canceled or rescheduled um, because of the virus. Eight. So, you know, they had a three and four record, but this is also a year for them that, um, you know, they were dealing with a lot of off the field stuff. And it looks like they're going to have even more off the field issues. 15 to 20 Houston players will not be playing the game, according to their coach, you know, Horgerson, saying that. Um, some of them were the academic issues as well that were on top of coronavirus or other issues. So I didn't see any names of the players because I believe that, you know, those aren't going to be released, but I'm sure you will know if they're not on the field. Um, but Houston has some good players, uh, obviously a, a program that <clears throat> has known for their pass attack. Um, People have been talking about this 2003 Hawaii Bowl. So if you go back to watch the UHs play in 2003 in a game that went into over triple overtime, ended with a fight at Aloha Stadium, um, you'll remember that the high scoring offense, the potency of the Cougar offense as well. Uh, Houston has kind of kept that uh, momentum and that, uh, you know, their. Uh, their schemes going for this many years later, we I, I still assume that UH or our UH Hawaii will have to deal with a, a pretty um, potent attack. Uh, UH to have a quarterback, Houston. I keep saying UH, so I have to say Houston because we need to stay um, consistent. So Houston, they have a junior quarterback. So apparently, right now he ranks 19th in uh, FPS in total offense averaging 300 yards a game. Um, so a guy who can clearly throw the ball, he's fourth in the league in passing yards in, in their league, 24th in FDS. <clears throat> averaging 260 yards, so a guy that can throw all the time. Uh, a team that has some uh, experience. They also have one of the best punt returners in the country, Marcus Jones, look out for that if you're punting. Um, and the team, they lead FPS with 342 punt return yards this season. So Mexico, uh, Houston, all of one of those teams that has a bunch of speed. Recruits guys from these uh, these parts that I'm in behind me. Uh, Texas, a lot of talent out here. A lot of um, you know players that can play at any level. And uh, it'll be a good chance for Hawaii to come into Dallas, put on a show, and hopefully... Uh, put on a, uh, a clinic for people also watching um, on TV. If they're not watching locally in Texas, you know, that whatever we do, whatever numbers we put up, whatever um, result uh, will have an effect on, on, on the program and the program's reputation. And that's uh, something we think about every time we play on national TV, right? Which doesn't always go our way at UH. Uh, but this game is on ESPN tomorrow. 3.30 Eastern. So if you're coming to us on the East Coast, how's it? Uh, if you're in the central time zone where I am right now, Texas is central. So it'll be 2.30 p.m. here. Um, if you're in the mountains, if you're in Colorado or Utah or something, our fans, they'll be watching the game at 1.30, 12.30. And all the way back at home, it'll be 10.30 in the morning. So I'm sure a lot of you will be up and at them and ready to go to watch Hawaii football with uh, whatever beverage of choice. I think by 10.30, that's a pretty reasonable time to start to drink anything you want. But if you're Robert Yamamoto, I mean, you don't care what time it is then. But uh, how's it, Robert? Here's some things to know about this game about Houston. Uh, they made a bowl appearance in seven of the last eight seasons. So this is a team that's perennially uh, a good team, a team that um, is going to have Obviously, they're a group of five team. We've been talking a lot about mid-majors and group of five teams and what does that mean. This team, Houston, is a team that, um, like UH, has had moments of when they've, they've tried to crack. Well, UH has cracked the BCS, right? We went in 2007. But Houston, um, before they lost their coach to Texas, um, you know, they, they were, were ranked and up there as well. Um, they got better pass rush, too. They had 22 sacks. 
in seven games. So that's pretty good. Over They're averaging over three sacks a game, which is kind of scary for uh, our O-line. they got to really buckle down and, and protect Shevin or protect whoever's back there. Um, you know, uh, they're first um, in, their, in, their, in their league in sacks. That's how good they are. Number one in their entire league. So um, definitely uh, a team that's going to have to, it's going to be potent on every side of the ball. Special teams, good punting, defense, a great pass rush, and uh, offensively, they can really sling it as well. <clears throat> Just a, re a, a really weird year. I mean, they've had so many games that have been canceled or, or moved that it's been hard for them to get in a rhythm. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, what happens this time. Um, I referenced that 2003 game. That was the last time these two teams met. That was the first time. Uh, it was December 25th, Christmas Day, 2003. And UH won 56 to 48 in three overtimes. That was the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl. Um, but Houston is actually really good against Mountain West teams. They're 19 and 7 all time. Um, but currently only 1 and 4 in bowl games. So maybe bowl games is where they. Uh, they are not able to, to reach their potential against a powerful Mountain West Conference. Uh, <coughs> I just, sorry, I don't, <coughs> oh my goodness, I had to laugh about that because uh, Boise and, I was talking about Boise State and talking about, um, you know, leave people leaving conferences and group of fives and US, UCF on TV yesterday against BYU. I mean, so much is happening. It's such a fluid situation with these schools and uh, their status in the country and now that the season's over, we're going to reevaluate them. We're going to have a whole offseason again to reevaluate these teams. And it's going to be a long offseason for sure. Um, especially for, um, you know, Coach Graham. He's going to have to deal with roster changes. And he's we're already seeing a bunch of roster changes. They're not even making it to the bowl game. Players entering the transfer portal. Players are going to be, he's going to be bringing in that he's going to want. He brought in like seven players already with this first, um, with the early signing period. And that's a pretty good sign. I think the early signing period is, is interesting. I mean, that's not a very, that's only a recent thing, having that early signing period. So um, coaches will start taking advantage of that more as, as players start leaving or transferring or maybe even entering transfer portals within that same year. Um, you know, and this, and this year alone, every transfer got a blanket waiver to play right now. Nobody has to sit out this year. So if you transfer from somewhere last year to go to another school, that is, that you, the fact that you can play right away at any school is unprecedented by far in NCAA. And it's definitely one of those rules that we're not going to see very much again, for sure. Because that just not, doesn't happen. But I know that the, they were tired of having to take the waivers from all the transfers. Because their transfers are saying, I don't want to go back to my school, you know, maybe in Hawaii or something. Or wherever they're going because they live somewhere far and they want to be by their family during the pandemic. So a lot of these, um, you know, schools are... Um, um yeah they're 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 just they're taking um you know risks and, and chances as well uh but coach uh graham and houston uh have a little bit of history themselves so coach graham actually is uh he the cougars are four and one against him okay so they beat they uh, uh, were three and one with Graham as head coach, and and one and they beat him like when he was on the staff of another team. So two and one when he was with Tulsa, one and zero oh when he was with Rice. Uh, so some history there, but you know these all these stats. What do they mean? You know, what do they mean? But give you a little bit of background because bowl games are are not going are just one off, right? These, it's not like we're going to see these guys every year. It's gonna, probably going to be another seventeen years before we see them again. So you never know. But there is familiarity um, still between Coach Graham and the Houston head coach, uh, Dana Horgerson. This is actually the sixth time that they're going to play each other, and Horgerson won all five meetings. So Graham has yet to beat the opposing coach on that sideline, uh, including the fourth time when both were serving as head coaches. So that is not a good thing for Coach Graham. So Coach Graham, this is, the history is not on his side right now. But, um, you know, history has been on the side of both of these teams in terms of their passing. So, of course, Hawaii, we already know Timmy Chang, we already know Cole Brandon, our past, um, you know, Kings. Um, but a name that you probably recognize, maybe, if you're an NFL fan, because he was a guy that played for the Rams, and then he played for the Vikings and almost took him to the Super Bowl. He was a guy that threw the miracle in Minnesota. His name is Case Keenum, and he played at Houston from 2007 to 11. 
and um, he's obviously a journeyman quarterback in the NFL. But he is the all-time uh, he is the all-time career passing leader in in the football bowl club division. He um, surpassed Timmy Chang by two thousand yards. Actually, um, Case Keenum is also the all-time career touchdown leader, and he beat um, Cole Brennan out. So. His kingdom actually had 155 touchdowns. <clears throat> Pretty stellar career. And, and, you know, still in the NFL. So um, that should tell you something as well. So that is this game. Uh, I think a lot of you have been very excited about the prospect of uh, finally being at a game. So if you're going to be here in Texas, let me know. Or comment or something. Uh, you know, I would love to see some of you at the game or say hi or whatever. And I think, um, you know, sometimes we'll have... Uh, some people that uh, will be last minutes to fly in like, hey, I'm at the airport, I'm coming. And I've already heard of some people are going to try and do that and get here to Dallas. So that'll be kind of fun when we uh, get to the game tomorrow and see a bunch of people, um, you know, that we don't usually get to see this year. Only two games with fans that Hawaii is playing in, the first being in Wyoming. So if you saw us in Laramie, uh, I'm glad because we said hi to a bunch of people. And there's a blog up. So if you look at the blogs, they're on the Facebook page as well. The Fresno and the Wyoming blog. Those are, I'm going to do another game day tomorrow. Game day, game day blog tomorrow. I'll be uh, there in the stadium as well at the New Mexico Bowl. So make sure you stay tuned to uh, Hawaii Sports Fans or at least be um, alerted when we go live because we go live on Facebook. And I'll put the stuff up on YouTube and stuff. But tomorrow will be a really fun day and a, another chance for... Hawaii fans to see their team. And that's that's Christmas enough right there. That's a good gift. Something I want to talk about, though. I just got this email from uh, the stadium. And uh, this is a topic that I, has obviously been brought up, so I kind of talk about it. I don't think I really talked about it too much. On Monday, I kind of talked about the stadium. And obviously, a disappointment that the stadium... Uh, so to, to, let's start from the beginning, right? The stadium authority... Which is a government-run state agency, fund, government-funded state agency. They run the stadium. Um, they are also in charge of, well, obviously they run the stadium, in charge of the maintenance and making sure that the uh, stadium is structurally sound and that it can have, um, you know, obviously look at my background right here of our of our show. You know, I have the stadium there because it's such an important place, but it does require a lot of maintenance. And I think this year, just given the fact that. So a few events are coming through and paying rent because that rent money, you know, goes to the maintenance, goes to everything else. Um, the stadium went ahead and made the announcement they're going to suspend all activities except the Hula Bowl, which is coming up pretty soon. Um, and I'm going to have the Hula Bowl, actually, the owners of the Hula Bowl on the show probably very soon to talk about that. Um, but that game, <clears throat> uh, they already, you know, put their down payment down. So I guess they're like, you know, they're going to play in the game. There's not going to be fans anyways, I guess. So that's why, you know, there won't be an issue with there, with having people in the, in the stadium. But there's nowhere in any official documents that I've seen where, uh, or any official statements made by the Aloha Stadium Authority that says that the stadium could be condemned. So that word condemned is a very deep, very heavy word, which has now went through the entire country. Now people in every part of the country are texting me. If there's anything Hawaii football related, right? If people hear it on their local news or they see it on ESPN, I usually get a text if I know them. And it was all about the stadium and where Hawaii is going to play. But um, I have a feeling that this is me personally. Uh, if the stadium does not, if, because there's a part of me that still believes that the money will be there to, you know, put the maintenance in, at least on some parts of the stadium. You don't need to open up every wing of the stadium. I mean, open up the sidelines. Even if you open up, I mean, you close the north end zone. I don't know where the most serious damage, I don't know where the most serious repairs are in need of. But if they're, you know, localized to certain parts of the stadium, you could close down that part of the stadium. It's 50,000 seats. We only need for the half of them, really, for it, unfortunately, um, to run UH football nowadays. Um, so I, I, there's a part of me that still believes that the stadium will... They'll be hosting games, Aloha Stadium, the old Aloha Stadium. <coughs> if not, then I could see um, uh, Chingfield, 
I I know a lot of people. So the Maui thing. Let's talk about the Maui thing real quick as well. That's kind of funny. And not funny because um, I I think I think it would be great if Maui if Maui could host a whole season of U.S. football. I think it would be a lot. It would say a lot for people in Maui. It would mean a lot to the fans on Maui, and it would um, show that they're important to the program. Demonstrate how our uh, fans from not from Oahu are uh, you know neglected sometimes or clearly you're never really thought about for a football game very rarely obviously Maui hosted a game 2001 I remember that game because it was the first game I ever watched streaming you know why because I had to I was in college and uh, it was like 56k speed up times basically so it was like one frame at a time and it was Bass he was the running back for and we played Montana <clears throat> we played Montana and Maui and I was a freshman in college, so... And I don't think I made it through the whole game because I was so tired. Because the game was... I went to college in the East Coast, so... I had ugh, trouble trying to stay up and watch. Um, but, you know, that's a long time since we had a game there. And I think, you know, Maui Memorial Stadium it has a good capacity. I mean, it could hold at least 12, 15, right? 15? Maybe up to 20? Um, but the reason I say Chingfield is on campus... And even though whatever but it seats right now, they can put in more seats for one for one. Um, yes, there is a Division One statute that says that uh, Division One membership is incumbent upon maintaining a certain amount of a certain attendance figure, right? Fifteen thousand uh, at rolling average over three years, I believe, is the verbiage. Anything with the NCAA, like I just said, the transfer students who get to play right away, or the students who don't, or the student athletes who aren't leaving, or, or who aren't um, losing a year of eligibility this year, all of those things are not normal with the NCAA, but that's why there's waivers. So um, I expect the UH to get a waiver to not have to do the 15K requirement uh, and play on campus. I mean, I think there's a lot of. Uh, room on campus for <clears throat> all kinds of fun stuff and, I, and I'm saying they need to turn that into a party and it's going to be on UH to do that as well I mean I, I in its in its current uh, the way that Chingfield is set up and just having a game there currently no of course not no that's not what I'm saying like they couldn't have a game there tomorrow night um, like they're not ready for that yet but they can they, they'll get they can be ready for uh you know, at least 10,000 people. And 10,000 wouldn't be too bad. I, I, and you could charge more. I mean, that's that's clearly too. They're going to have to charge more to make up the lost revenue. And you might not be able to make it all up, but if you're not prepared, I'd say any season ticket holder, you know, you should be prepared to at least pay maybe twice if you're going to play if you're going to play in a stadium that that's that is that small. And we're assuming that the uh, you know, the game environment is going to increase for me, I mean, there's so many places you could put um, coaches, you could put suites in there. For me, I would have a lot of standing room places, standing room only. We have the um, parking garage. You can put bleachers on top of the parking garage, actually. Or you could, you know, make that all, make the entire parking garage also standing room. Um, of course, people that want to do standing room. You could do a lot of things. And I, and I think... Uh, it's going to take a lot of creativity, but it could be accomplished on campus at Chingfield. So that's what I'm saying. That's the only reason. And I, and I, if Maui could pull it, the, the only reason that it would be hard for Maui is the money situation. Right? Ma, Maui, you have to fly your entire athletic department up there to run the game. And then you're going to have to uh, do that every, if you're going to do seven, six or seven times a year from Oahu, that's, that's not going to happen. And it just costs a lot. And Chingfield literally is a part of the offices of the athletic department. So they would have to go nowhere. And the entire, it would be all hands on deck. And the students, you would imagine, the students literally live yards away from the stadium. So might actually get students out and turn it into a party. And it's what it has to be. You have to make it a party. You have to incentivize people to, to be entertained. Right? Like, at a certain point, I, I had to stop going to UH games and just putting all of my eggs in one basket of wanting to win because that's a crazy thing if you're a Hawaii fan to always want to win every game because that just doesn't happen it happens less than it does happen 
Okay, so, um, or it, ha it happens less than it does, you know. So you you have to um, be reasonable with what you expect when you go to a game. But at the same time, if you're paying money, you know, whether you're watching a game or not, wherever you're going and you're spending money to be in a place, you're expecting to be entertained. So that entertainment factor is absolutely needs to be there. And I think it can be done. At Chain Field, I think there could be bleachers and you could have stuff going on under. You could have, I you could have people going on the last Marfami Stadium. You could have a concert there after. You could have a, keep them have the game on the big screen. You could have the pool open. Have people watching from the pool. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you can do. It can be very, you know, and the NCAA can waive the requirement of needing to have 15,000 people there. And they can still make money. But you have to be very creative. And I think, I, think, I think there's a lot of possibility there. But that's what I would do, personally, if I was, um, you know, and uh, I, I think that uh, just given uh, the fact that there's not that much money to spend, I can't imagine them, UH, wanting to spend money to do something like fly to Maui for seven games. Like, I, it's it's just it's got to be like bare minimum. And the money that they were going to put into a lot of the stuff with the stadium, maybe that money or whatever money was going to be used to upgrade the stadium. Which is probably I don't know in the million I don't know how much money several hundred thousand I would imagine just repairs that could just go into um, adding stuff to Chingfield. Of, of course not just it's different monies right state money even if you're a state agency and you're another state institution you guys all have different money it's it's confusing but it needs to work because the government and uh, you know stadium authority and UH they all have to be on the same page. Guys. They just all do. And with that, I um, just got this email today from uh, the new Aloha Stadium. So I don't know how many of you are signed into uh, any of their uh, their emails. N-A-S-E-D. I don't know if they say NAST or NASID or whatever. Uh, I don't know how they would, they would use it as an acronym. Because that would be a weird acronym or a name for the stadium. I would just... I'm sure they're just going to go with Aloha Stadium or new Aloha Stadium. But anyways, this uh, rendition that you see on the screen, or I have it, if you're listening to the, the podcast, I guess I will try and describe it for you. But um, it basically is um, open on, on one. It's covered uh, on one sideline and in both end zones and covered only up to the front row. So it's not totally covered, but covered all the way up to the front row. So more covering than we have in our current stadium. Because it looks like the coverage, the overhang should at least reach the front row of the stadium. And that's on three sides. And then the one side, uh, one sideline has a, uh, so that'll be interesting. The, the Jumbotron is on the sideline. And then behind it, see, so I don't mind this. It, I would do I would do that stadium a little bit different. Because I would probably make that one side where this Jumbotron is, I'd probably make it open. I, I'm, a, I'm a proponent of open-ended stadiums, kind of like, and I don't mean like keeping them open, like no gates. I mean like um, like Dallas, like right here. One of my favorite stadiums to go to is um, Jerry World, right? The Dallas Cowboy Stadium, because it's always a party there. He always makes it fun. And even if you are don't have a seat, don't make sure you have a standing room seat and you can get in or standing room area. And even if you don't really have an area to watch a game, and there are a bunch of those people who buy standing room seats, standing room only. This don't even guarantee that you're going to see the field. It just gets you into the stadium. But the energy that's in there, the people that are in there, the fun that's going around, that's worth it already. So if you're paying 50 bucks, some people are paying $50 to get into Dallas Cowboy Stadium, to stand on the fifth, on the very top, and not even, can even see the, the field. But you know why it's worth it to them? Because it's a party. Because they're going to have, they're going to be entertained. Right? Are you not entertained? If you're not entertained, people aren't going to go if they're not entertained. Period. Uh, but I think uh, that was a very interesting, um, you know, this 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 rendition uh, looks like it's it's similar to um, it's similar to let's see, uh, I'm trying to see which stadium. I guess like a newer soccer type stadiums. Are, they they seem smaller. Uh, kind of in a so this was to be like a 35,000 seater as well um, but anyways this photo this was just emailed so if you are on the um, mailing list for the new Aloha Stadium Entertainment District this 
conceptual rendering that they were sent, that they um, emailed out. Uh, this is actually what they're, they're looking for public comments. So if you have any public comments to provide, um, you have until February 8th, 2021. So right now with the old stadium, if we're gonna have to transition to a new stadium, they're gonna you know, hope to push the stadium quicker. And by they, I mean so many different moving parts and such a crazy bureaucracy, but that's government, that's Hawaii government. And, uh, but right now, time is of the essence. Like the stadium needs to, if, if, if the, if the team is not going to be able to play in a low stadium, if there's a part of me that still thinks they are, then they, uh, need to, this stadium needs to be done by 2020. Like it just absolutely needs to be done on time. Like there cannot, and it already is delayed, but now it has to be done because I don't think that NCAA is going to wait that long. I think two years for sure, they'll be like, whatever, you can't play. But pushing it after that. Um, so, uh, yeah, they want public comments about this. The website, OEGC, the number two, dot D-O-H, dot Hawaii, dot gov. Oh, wait, it's a whole thing, yeah. Uh, or you can provide email at nased.eis at wilsonokamoto.com so um this is that's that's what the um the rendering is uh chris kinamaka who is a public works administrator for the uh, state of hawaii department of accounting and general services he says we encourage full public and stakeholder engagement in the draft eis process from the beginning, we have put a premium on community outreach and that commitment will continue. So, you know, this is a chance for you to make, and this is about the whole area, right? Because the stadium is only going to be one part of this entertainment district. So if you're putting the name entertainment in there, it better be entertaining. Uh, or you're putting the word entertainment in there. But this is for the whole state, right? So um, there's a 45 day period for collecting comments. And that's, uh, you know, what's going on. Um, and then this, uh, after that, um, the final EIS will be made and the governor, the office of the governor will be the ones who approve it. So this is a good chance for anybody that is, um, you know, interested in giving comments about the new stadium because, you know, that's where you're going to be there for at least the next probably 50 years, maybe longer. So, you know. I always, it's funny, I was just driving around. So tonight I got to go to eat some delicious Tex-Mex food with Ryan and his girlfriend. Uh, Ryan Sue, who's, if you're in the Warrior Nation Facebook group, you'll see him post a lot. He's, he's out here in Dallas. And um, he was talking about his high school. We went past his high school, South Lake High School in Dallas. And they have a stadium that has like, I don't know, 15,000 seats or something. It's crazy. It's like a nice stadium. He's like, yeah, it's one of the older ones. It was built in 2001. Like, oh, that's old already in Texas. Um, so, you know, we're way behind, but we're still trying to build, we're still trying to improve our stadium from 1975. But uh, that's another reason that we need a new stadium is because what's going on in stadiums, the trends that we see in modern stadiums are not in a low stadium, right? We don't have areas, we don't have a uh, suite level. We don't have a club level in Aloha Stadium. <clears throat> we don't have a lot of, um, you know, just areas that other stadiums have or fun um, places for like parents to take their kids. And that's why I was like thinking too, at Ching Field it would be cool because you could have uh, maybe the beach volleyball courts open and like have kids playing in there. Like you don't have to have everybody watching the game. You can have people in there and then just paying to be in there. That's why it, not everything needs to be game focused. It just needs to be money taking in focus and entertaining these people focus. That's all it is. Money in entertainment. Oh. Uh, so, and for a lot of people watching a single football game, it's very entertaining and they'll pay for that. But that's, that's even a lot of people, right? These days, if you go to a game, I went to, um, well, I went to uh, this year when I went to watch uh, MLS game, LAFC play Real Salt Lake. I was in, in, in Utah. In the in many in the middle of the breaks when there were you know dead balls or something there were there was nothing really entertaining going on because you know they don't have the money right now during a pandemic to entertain people 
but you realize how much you uh, the stimuli uh, you you kind of miss it or you realize it's not there during timeouts or during dead balls because in a stadium you're usually constantly right there's something going on there's a song being played there's you know in a lot of stadiums there's a commercial being played that okay that's one thing that <clears throat> we cannot have anymore of commercials in the stadium unless I'm on but uh, you know these commercials and ways that they use to pay for the stadium are all also another way of um, that or another way of uh, of fundraising that you don't see too often too many a lot of stadiums are selling name rights like naming rights which is what the sofa uh, whatever the um, SoFi right whatever the um, Stan Sheriff Center is called now um, you know they sold some of the naming rights for that. So maybe for this new Aloha Stadium, that'll be on the table as well. I'm not sure though, because it's a public, it's public, yeah. it's a public, yeah, it's a state. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they, if I don't know if I've ever heard of a state. There's gotta be state, state, state owned buildings. Oh, there obviously are state owned buildings that are named after people. So I guess the stadium could also be named after a company. I don't know if they pay. I mean, if a company is willing to put up money for the naming rights, um, that'll be a, a definite way of being able to secure some, you know, capital funding, if that's what's ne needed right now. Another way of getting funding for this, uh, like I was saying, and with the current stadium, is to sell our seats, um, literally sell the bucket seats in a lot of stadium. Like I would buy my row, uh, my front row crew. Well, maybe they'll they'll want their individual seats on my other people in my row, but um, you know, I think that's an, another way. I mean. We, That'd be one less seat to have to throw out or to drag to the dump. Um, you know, it'll also build some capital and some um, liquid infusion into this new project. Uh, so those are the kind of things that maybe they, they are on the table right now, but I would think they're a lot more imminent now that the old stadium, although stadium is uh, being talked about as being unplayable now, which is, it, it's also crazy. I don't know if that is, if it's true or not, but, um, you know, I feel like uh, this time with the stadium and the fact that when this, this new stadium hit its first major hurdle, which was in this last legislative session, right? When Senator Kai Kahele, who's now Congressman Kahele, right? He, he uh, um, pulled this, he basically stopped the project from happening because of language within the contract, within the bill that took funding from one government agency to another, but it didn't provide parameters around whether that funding was going to be able to, you're going to be able to do that in the future or something. It was like the, the, the language was too broad or something. I'm not a real technicality, but that technicality and that language, that word, put this stadium in jeopardy for a year. Because yes, it's supposed to open in 2023, but after that happened, we don't know whether it's gonna open again. But now that we're finding out that the stadium, and, that, and that's why people are saying, well, it seems kind of weird. And if this is a, a leverage push by uh, the stadium authority right now to say, hey, it, it's too unsafe, we can't play any games in it. And if they're saying that just to, you know, push our legislature to, um, you know, push forward the funding, and to make this project happen, then I uh, I get that as well from them. So I could see this as being a political move as well, just because it uh, makes sense given uh, the situation that the, the stadium is in right now, the new stadium, where it's caught up right now. So uh, yeah, some it'll be interesting. But uh, oh, I guess there's, there's a bunch of other, um, yeah, so December 12th is when they made the finalists, right? The three Aloha Stadiums um, projects, the three different ones. So uh, that's one of them right there. I'm pretty sure that's the one they said, right? Yeah. So if you go and check your, it's N-A-S-E-D, N-A-S-E-D dot um, Hawaii dot gov. And you'll be able to get all the um, <clears throat> the info. So it'll be interesting to see what we, we go from here, uh, where Hawaii football goes from here. And I think that um, the stadium 
is is obviously an uncomfortable situation to not be able to have this uh, a place to play for sure next year. But I don't think it's that big of a deal. I really don't. I think kids are going to come and play wherever they play. Like it's, they're coming to Hawaii, or, and we're going to have a new stadium. There should be something that they'll be happy about. You know, something that they'll be able to grow into. Um, so I don't I don't see the stadium situation just like killing recruiting. But I, obviously, it's not great if articles are being sent to ESPN or being picked up by Yahoo Sports or something that say that the stadium is being condemned. So that, apparently, the word condemned was a KHON word, which was gotten from, uh, which they got from inside sources within. So it might be true. Maybe maybe it needs to be condemned. I don't know. It's just not anything that's beneficial. So, um, <clears throat> but words like condemned can definitely kill recruiting. Because condemned is not a word that, it's like a very heavy word. It's like it's not like oh it just needs repairs it's like oh no if you touch it you are gonna die like that's basically the, what people think of when they think come condemned like don't get too close to it so yeah language like that is probably not helpful um but in the grand scheme of things as we're trying to build a new stadium i think it does help i think saying this stadium we're not gonna put any more money into it like we put so much money into the maintenance that all of that money should just be going to a new you know, stadium, right? It's like it's gonna pay for itself if you just put it into a new stadium. We don't have to. We can spend less on the on the maintenance. It might not pay for itself, but it's already on the margin. You're already losing uh, the amount of uh, upkeep on the marginal dollar that you spend because you're about to close it down anyways. So why would you keep repairing it? Uh, I guess is 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 the final question from the Aloha Stadium Authority. But that's a that's something to be watching. Uh, there is another. There's another, um, there's another, uh, design rendering. I thought, so yeah, I guess those are the three. Yeah. So the final design is going to be determined by, uh, oh, okay. Or, or this one is, I guess this one is the one that was picked out of the three. That's what I'm getting from this. The one that I have on the screen right here. And then, um, final design and then they're going to design and so within this general design which looks like there's a um like a uh place that you can have concerts or something like a uh, that's behind the scoreboard so that's cool i wonder if that see that that part i'm wondering if you can just open that up completely it would be weird because you have to move that's why i would rather have like one of the end zones open Kind of like and just all grass i would i like it better with the if the grass maybe that that'll be my comment have like that grass area and one of the ends of the set so it can go all the way down and maybe like a hill that people can go down so you can go up the hill and go down and watch and sit on the hill and watch the game or something that'd be fun gotta make it fun you can't just make it the same all the time plus we're in hawaii we can make things a little bit different for us uh i do like that the stadium does look kind of hawaiian-ish at least it does it does skew green and uh it does um seem like it incorporates a lot of uh, local trees and um, green spaces. So that'll be good, but that'll also change what this footprint of Lowell Stadium looks like. So no longer will it just be a stadium and a bunch of parking. It's gonna be stadium and it's gonna have, you know, mixed use, uh, even, even residential. So residential, commercial, um, It'll be an interesting place and you know a place that if they really want to get the the money for it back for it and and see uh the immediate impact of this of this facility then it needs to be used during the week right it cannot just be a football it cannot just be or whatever not just football it cannot just be a concert venue it has to be a week a week to week venue and why would you use it week to week and i think that's that's where they have to think of it as well um, there's already going to be a rail station that comes right to it um, you know, so the next step is just getting people to use that area effectively. But, um, yeah, so that's a new stadium. I think a lot of people are really stressed out about it and I get it. I think a lot of people are really, um, worried about whether, um, you know, Hawaii is going to be able to find a place to play, which they're, they'll find a place to play. It's not a, it's not a big deal. <clears throat> they'll find a place. 
Um, and I don't think it's going to be, I think it's going to be on Oahu. Like I, I, and most of the reason is, and you'd have to guarantee the, um, a, a real sizable, um, revenue figure to be, to move the game. So, because in Oahu, like they won't, they can just do everything right on campus, which I, that's why I think it's to be Chingfield. It has to be, uh, and, and you can pimp it out, um, and by pimp it out, I mean just make it look real cool. Like it's not hard to make something look good. It really isn't. Like you can, people duct tape things, right? I mean, to make things work. It's like putting very, much nicer duct tape, but duct tape that will also um, expand and allow for stadium seating and allow for people to be a part of the atmosphere. And you could add that to Ching Field and I think really um, develop a uh, really fun atmosphere and a fun game so i'm kind of excited i think it, i i i'd be excited to 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 help to make it happen at chingfield because i think there's a lot of potential there uh in terms of um making a, a real college atmosphere that we have never been able to see before at a low stadium because it's going to go from a low stadium which is a huge stadium to a very intimate place right and i think that's um they have to take advantage of that you know like have the players like a Dallas Stadium. The players come out underneath, and there are people pre-gaming and in their club, and the players go right through there. That's what they got to do. That's what Hawaii needs to do. They need to make little events like that, or make little um, cool um, side, you know, parts of the stadium that uh, are modern, that cannot be found in the current Alo Stadium for sure. Uh, but that will attract people that don't really care about the game. Like people are, people in Hawaii will go to a game. People, people of all, people who hate sports will go to sporting games if you tell them, "Oh, I have suite tickets." Almost every anybody will go, right? Uh, like if anybody that knows what a suite is, right? If you've never been to a suite at a football game or a basketball game, baseball game, um, like and I took, right? I had a suite at the Mariners game last year when I took my Hawaii sports fans group to Seattle. Um, it's awesome, right? You, you, it's just you and you have your own private room and your own private viewing area and private bleachers and you pay a lot, but, um, it's an amazing experience to be in it. Seattle game that we went to, it was a September game. The Mariners were so far out of the playoff. Um, both teams were already playing most of their double A rosters. So it really wasn't like a major league game. It was like a high level minor league game. It was Ichiro night, so that was cool, and they did have a big um, fire uh, firework thing for Ichiro after the game. But it didn't matter what was happening on the field. I could care less what happened at the game because we were in a suite, and it was so fun. It was so fun, right? And even if I go to Fenway, I took a group to Fenway Park, went to Boston, 2017. The game was like a blowout. Like Boston got blown out, but like. I just had fun eating, you know, uh, funnel cake with my friend and like going to walking around Fenway and just like being like in Fenway Park. And that's the fun part of it is just being there. Right? The game is secondary. Um, and I'm not saying the game needs to be secondary. The game should still be the primary reason you're at, you're at a sporting event. But it's what you do around the game. It's what you uh, it's how you incorporate the fun that doesn't have to do with what's going on on the field or with the scoreboard. Especially if you're not a great team. Especially if you don't win all the time. You need to have your friends come for another reason. Other than that. Other than just uh, wanting to um, be, you know, masochists and just deal with another loss. Which it felt like in those 0 and 12 years. And 1 and 11 year that I went to every home game for. So this will be a reward for the fans if they can really create a new facility. Um, make it look really nice. And... Um, Get it done on time. And that's the biggest thing. So this stadium situation, I'm not sure that we're not going to play in the low stadium next year. I still think there's a chance we go back there. Uh, if we don't play in the stadium, I think we play in Shingfield. We play on campus. They bring in more seats. We may not get to 15K, but we'll get a waiver. And we might still turn out on top with uh, revenue if... Uh, you know they charge appropriately which is going to be more like you're you should have to pay more if you're going to go to a smaller venue that's just how sports work so i think if there are people that are afraid of donating or paying more you know that might be an issue but i don't think that will be an issue i think 
I think like the real um, committed people to the program and the ones that love this program and are going to want to be at every game, they'll pay whatever they need to. Um, Cause like I said, I mean, going to uh, where were we? oh Wyoming, the Wyoming game was like sixty dollars just in the front row, you know, on a, on a metal bleacher in thirty degree weather. So, I mean, in Hawaii, we're not even our highest ticket prices. I don't think think we're there yet. Maybe maybe sixty seventy five. I don't know, but you know, also on the on the other end, the experience is different, right? When you're on on campus, when you're when a team can run their own stadium. They make this experience different for their fans. And that's uh, that's what UH is going to need to do, whichever they do. Bradley says, pick up some New Mexico merch. Yeah, that's true. It would be good praise. Okay, I got to find some. Still a lot of bull takes on the Hawaii side, Brad says, for the game. High school team with the Hawaii H logo in Texas. High Tower High School is playing. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, Brad said, Maui can do it. The UH Maui College is a four-year college. Right next to them. Yeah, they, that's true. UH Maui is is growing. Um, it's not really whether it's a Maui school or not. It's the people of Maui. And I, I think that a one-off game, they'll support. It's hard to support a team for a whole season. It's just hard. And they have a fraction. Even though I, I would say on Maui, on Kauai, they're probably even more hardcore fans than Oahu on a lot. Uh, just because, you know, those a lot of them have to fly to Oahu to watch a game. So they, they've, they're they very committed. So I'm not, this, it's not about Maui not deserving the game. I think I think if Maui could, could pull it off, and it would just be a revenue thing. And they'd have to guarantee it. It cannot be like the day of the game hoping that the, the gate shows up. Like it cannot be. It has to be pre-sold. So if it was in Maui and they were they were they were planning on having the game the whole season on Maui, if I were UH, I'd have to guarantee at least ten thousand season tickets sold that year. Because I don't know how many UH I don't know how many Oahu season tickets or holders would go to every game on Maui. They might keep their season tickets just to go to one game or, you know, just to have them to support. But um you're going to have to hope they hold on to it. Because if people give up their tickets because, nah, I don't want to go to Maui, what are they going to do when it comes back to Wahoo? Those people are gone. I have to say, a lot of people, and that's something that Steven Sai talked about too on uh, on my show when he came. Um, what, when he came on was, it's scary to not have people at the stands, in the stands at the stadium, because you might not get those people back ever. They might never come back. Because you told them once not to come, not to go They'll not come back. And that is such a Hawaii thing. And I totally agree with them. And I, that's going to happen. So the numbers are dropping. they got to find a way. And that's on UH. UH needs to find a way to get more fans. Period. At the end of the day, this is what my program is for. This is what my my company is for, is to get more fans for UH. And I don't even, I'm not even UH. So that needs to be a part of UH. It's a huge part of their, um, their work right now. Brandon uh, says, once Hula Bowl is pow, demolish the stadium and build one side of a grandstand or enough with 15,000 seats and press box so you just can play in 20. Oh, yeah, and you could do that. Yeah, and I think that, so if they do, so Brandon is saying, yeah, once this game, the Hula Bowl, which is going to be the end of January, once that game is over, um, tear down the stadium and build one side up. Or tear down, you know, tear down one side of the stadium and build up that side again. And that was one of the plans, I think, I believe, I I um when i went back to that eis meeting last summer so that was a long time ago already or last year not last summer last football season um oh no that was last summer that was before last season oh my gosh that was a long time ago so that eis plan about uh you know um building the new stadium there was a possibility that the stadium would be on the same exact footprint so the same exact area that the bowl is now then you could just do it one at a time so yes, what Brian is saying is definitely possible because that was one of the options too, was do it one at a time and then if you only get half the, the bowl done, and then you can do the other bowl, you know. And maybe this is a good time to just have a big, you know, grass hill. I like big grass hills and you can, it's like being at the Little League World Series, you know, where I went to watch my cousin play, YPO Little League. Um, in 2002, so he was in the Little League team that didn't make it all the way to the very end, but it was fun, amazing experience to go there. And they have a huge hill, and that's how all the, if you watch the Little League World Series championship game every year, right, you see hundreds, uh, not hundreds, tens of thousands, tens of thousands still at a Little League park on a hill. Um, it's, it's really amazing. Uh, and I think it's really cheap and easy way to have seats, you know, considering it's just dirt and grass. Um, obviously, there's 
other engineering issues that go into it. But I think that given, uh, you know, like you look at Clemson or like Virginia, how like one of their, the size of their, their end zone is all grass or they, the team runs down. Like, I think that would be super cool. And just aesthetically a really cool thing. And something that people are going to want to see. In the new SoFi Stadium, I was worried because, you know, SoFi in LA, this is a very expensive stadium. The seats are super expensive, but I mean, looking at it now, I'm excited to be there. And I know so many people who are, don't even care about the Rams or the Chargers are going to want to be there because it's SoFi. It's now the best stadium in the whole wide world. <clears throat> That's what happened. And so, you know, people are going to want to see the stadium. And when I went to the Superdome in, in New Orleans, me and Brad went to Sugar Bowl. Uh, I mean, that was the first time I stepped into the Superdome, and I was like, whoa, like, this is crazy. Like, this, wow. And the Superdome is pretty old. It's not It's not even decades old. Uh, but there's just something about certain facilities that, you know, you, you want to be there just to be inside of it. And uh, I think that would be kind of cool for the new one. Brad says, a wealthy new MLS team can solve many problems for UH. The NBA is looking to expand. We could definitely use professional sports to help out our cause. The design needs an arena. Many stadiums and entertainment districts have arenas next to them. I like that. I like that idea too uh, with Brad. And I and I agree. I think that if a team, a pro team was to come here, I don't know if I had the money, I would bring my own pro team, build my own stadium and let UH use it or rent it out to them and make a stadium that is... Because uh, that's that ultimately, Aloha Stadium is being built this this entertainment district is being built with the community in mind which is fair and which is right right we should be built because everybody's going to benefit everybody that lives in hawaii should benefit from this stadium. that's just the way like just like everybody should benefit from rail like any major community-wide <clears throat> project should have a should have a pretty big um you know trickling down effect especially like something like a major public work where either you know you're able to take advantage of it as a citizen and or um you know have traffic alleviated because people are taking a train now that should be something that's happening but this new stadium at the end of the day is for uh football it's for everybody but it needs to have uh football in mind so if uh football isn't in mind if we're not talking about what this football what college football saturdays will look like even though there's only seven or eight of them a year in that building I, I, you, you, you shouldn't build it until you have that in mind. Um, because Aloha Stadium, I don't know how state of the art it was in 1975. And maybe it was, maybe it was like mind blowing. Like, oh my gosh, I'm at the World's Fair and I'm seeing all these new innovations. Uh, I doubt it because I don't, I don't know if troughs in a, in a men's bathroom, maybe that was innovative. Um, but stadiums have to move with the trends. So yes, there needs to be Wi-Fi and all that crazy stuff. Obviously there's like, very modern things that you can add on later. But not having a club section, not having a suite section, that's already killed our stadium. So if this new stadium doesn't have those things too, we're kind of going to be messed up. But I believe that all of those those parts are going to be added in as well. Uh, but still, going to be a very different place. Very, very, very different. It's like you look at, right, Mile High Stadium and then the new Mile High Stadium. Like they all kind of, or like Soldier Field and the new Soldier Field. It's like they're at least similar or built on the same. Like this is like a whole new facility. Like this is not even like the same stadium, so, which is good because we need a whole new stadium. But I, I also would like to see some of like the charm of the old stadium, maybe like a way that, you know, architecturally or the the facade, like keeping that alive. Because at least like at Soldier Field in Chicago, they have those columns, right, to make it look like it's still the old Soldier Field. Like this old stadium is not going to look like the old. It's just going to look like a new place, which is kind of disappointing as well. So I have to go back and watch my show and remember all the things that I said so I can email them. But make sure you guys are emailing them too. Go check it out. Give them on all of your um, your uh, your comments as well. Brandon says, once a new stadium opens, Wayne got to start Hawaii FC. Yeah, maybe I do. It'd be hard. I have this part of me that wants to bring LAFC to Hawaii. And just build our, uh, Cause I, I, I think like this new stadium is perfect to have teams come in and play exhibitions like LAFC, like a major league soccer team. Um, Brad and I went to watch uh, Galaxy when, uh, when um, you know, the kind was playing for, for LA Galaxy. Uh, and uh, his wife was a Spice Girl. Um, and we were there. And that was cool uh, to see David Beckham. And they played an Australian team. And then had another MLS team, I think. Uh, 
But those tournaments like that, those tournaments should be happening way more often. Because first of all, that's the kind of tourism I'm down with. If it's like sports tourism is, is it's, it's okay. Some sporting events might not always have the best fans. I'll take that, okay? Uh, but it's sustainable in that it's all focused on an event. Um, so you can, you can, it's obvious, you know, when you see the impact of, of a major event, right? Like Pro Bowl, we can tell the numbers in the hotel occupancies go sky high and like restaurants are, are selling out and stuff. So you see the main economic impact, but, um, yeah, I mean that, that needs to be, uh, reevaluated as well. How we use the stadium to generate revenue for, um, the state and it can be done. It can definitely be done. And soccer is one of those ways as well. And that's a trend. That's why I'm saying you got to know the trends. If you, if you're like, oh, soccer, you're not, you don't know the trends, bro. That's just the way it is. Like just watch sports, watch sports center, watch all these things. You can see like just the way the sports world is going and where, what direction it's moving into is, um, just got to jump on there. You just got to jump on board. Nice uniforms, like things that we used to do before. People don't get any more, maybe like vintage, like we still at UH don't have the vintage. We've been waiting to have our vintage game, our, our rainbow games. Like they seem, they seem, I guess, minimal or they're not prioritized uh, for certain people, but it, it comes at a price, I think. Mahalo, Brad. Oh, Houston Dynamo. Yeah, there it was. It was the Houston. So he was there as well. Uh, Brad. So he remembered Houston Dynamo played in that game. So they had a, a soccer LA Galaxy. That was at Aloha Stadium. So more events like that, I think um, we have those in mind. Then we can really think about what this new stadium can do. Uh, but yes, UH football against UH football tomorrow. So I guarantee, guarantee tomorrow UH is going to win. I guarantee you that. Uh, all right. So 2.30. If you're here in Texas, 2.30, 10.30. If you're in Hawaii, it's Christmas Eve. It's the Hawaii Bowl. Uh, please follow us. Continue to follow us right here uh, on Hawaii Sports Fans Facebook, at Hawaii Sports Fans on YouTube, uh, at HI High Sports Fans on Twitter or on Instagram, and on podcast, the Hawaii Sports Fans channel, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, our iHeartRadio, Podbean. Um, go and check us out, our podcast. Uh, pretty cool here we are one more game hawaii football fans we'll see you tomorrow espn go look for us there are not going to be too many of us in the stands so we'll go wave at you we'll wave back take care guys aloha